Hi, this is Myra with Boutique Paint. Today we're making a fall sign. I am started out with an Iron Orchid Design 12 by 16 art panel. I stained it with a water-based stain and then I went over the entire thing with DIY's cottage color linen white. Here I'm pulling back a little bit of the paint to reveal the stain below. My board is now dry. Um, I've got my stencil on it. It's adhered with um, stencil glue. And I'm going to just do the uh, top part of the pumpkin patch. Then I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to add the U pick and I'm not sure if I'm going to add the O or not yet. Um, I'm using old school DIY paint. And I'm just going to pounce. And this is very similar to uh, what we did on the pillow. Um, some of the steps. But this has got a little bit of a twist as far as what we're going to do with the pumpkins and, and whatnot down below. So I'm probably not going to completely fill this in. I'm probably going to leave it a little bit more on the light side. Um, a little bit closer to what the P looks like currently. But you need to get your letters defined at least. Um, so you can read what it says. So I dried this. Now we're going to, and I repositioned the stencil and we're going to do the U pick now. And I think what I'm going to do is once I get this other elements added, then I will decide whether I'm going to add the arrow or not. And I can go back and add it if I feel like I want it. It's always easier to add than take away. So this is the approximate uh, layout that I'm going to do of the um, stamps. You, when you're doing this part, you want to think about what parts you want showing. Like, do you want leaves in front of the pumpkins? Do you want the pumpkins behind, in front? Um, I use the mask to kind of give me a feel of how they might look. And make sure they're facing the way that the stamp actually stamps. That's why up is always a good thing on these. Like this one. I don't think that's up. It looks backwards. That's up. So I'm going to start with this. Small. And I did take a purple pen that disappears and kind of traced so I'd know where I wanted things. I have a feeling it's going to disappear completely on me before I get there. But we will just wing it. So I'm going to stamp with um, black ink, and this is Iron Orchid Designs black ink, and then I'm going to emboss it. And I'm going to use a heat gun to emboss it, and I'll show you my, this is my sample board. I did it because this is a different sample board, but I did it at the bottom here, and this is with copper embossing powder, which is really pretty. Um, Today I'm using uh, Rangers embossing powder. They come in unbelievably nummy colors. Um, actually, I think I'm going to use this for the pumpkin. But they come in kind of, um, kind of old uh, uh, old world colors, and they're just uh, really rich and nummy. And my mom always called them ugly colors when I used to do jewelry. She'd always say, you just love your ugly colors. And this is the kind of stuff she was referring to. But it made beautiful stuff, uh, the color combination. With kind of the darker, more earthy tones. That's what it is. All right, so I'm going to stamp this. Make sure you don't have any goobers that are going to over stamp. Just going to bring it over from the edge a little bit. 
And you want a really good image with this. Because anywhere there's ink, the, the embossing powder will be sticking to. And it doesn't matter that I'm using black. You could also use clear, but you could also use almost anything. I used the black on that copper, and it doesn't even show up. I have not tried... Well, yes, I did. I used green as my sample, a different sample board. So I'm just going to pour embossy power. It doesn't matter if you empty the entire container because you're just going to turn around and put it right back in the container. So I'm just going to... I'm going to dump it all over the place um, and then grab a piece of paper, have it folded already. And I'm just going to dump it over. Just kind of tap it a little bit. And I have a little bit of extra. I'll just set this aside before I make a mess of it. I should put it right back in the container immediately. Um, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> but that way it doesn't spill. And I'm just going to take a paintbrush, if I can find one. I had a whole stack of paintbrushes here and then I buried it. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and right here... A little of the embossing powder. I'm not sure why it's stuck there. Maybe the paint was just a smidge wet still, or maybe the stamp. And I'm just going to loosen it up, and I'm just going to brush it off. And if you don't do that, then you will have that stick when you go to heat it up. So basically what this does is it makes a it heats up and it makes kind of a plastic for lack of better ways to describe it. You do see a little bit of the black coming through. It actually looks kind of cool, but we'll see once it heat sets here. So I'm going to um, turn off the sound so you don't have to hear the process. So this is very interesting because I did another sample board and the black uh, didn't show through. It, the green showed through. This was a different sample board. I was sampling different paints and um, it turned out green. So I don't know why this one didn't. You, it, there's a tint of orange and I'm okay with that. Um, but I think I will switch maybe to clear just so I can see how that turns out, or maybe I'll use, um, I could use uh, IOD's turmeric. I'm gonna give that a try. So we're gonna go on to the next part here. So now I'm gonna add a leaf, and I put my mask down, and I realized that part of the reason why I had the embossing powder stay is the purple pen. It wasn't dry yet, that's why. It's stuck to it. So I'm using New Grass, another Iron Orchid design color, and I'm going to stamp over the top. Just kind of try to figure out how I want that to look. Different Embossing powders obviously do different things as far as um, their color. Put my lid back on that. And then I'm going to put this green. Over the top. my 
paper. Get my paintbrush and just get a little bit of the extras off. on the side. Right. And you need to heat set in between each one of these um, so that it, you're not messing up your powders. Um, if you just stamp away and then your colors will get all mixed up and matted and funny. And so we, we're just going to slowly do this process. where the fun begins. So on my sample, I tried a couple different types of um, mediums, watercolor being the base um, idea in this. Uh, this is a metallic watercolor set that I have. And this is over what I did here. This is DIY paint and this is with no top coat. Then I put um, big top over on this side. So if that's what you have, just put, um, big top or a sealer over the top not wax but a sealer um the reason this worked and you know you can you can get it to work that being said you have more movement if you have uh, a slicker surface so that's one of the reasons why i used uh jamie ray's uh, diy um paint because it's got a built-in sealer um this one this is my sample with um, it's on the pink but it's kind of pretty um and it's got the sealer built in that's the jamie ray so that was my sample so we're gonna start painting so use whatever you got as far as watercolor if you have a kid set somewhere in the house give that a try um i have a couple different things i love the distress crayons by ranger these ones you just i'll give you a sample just so you can see the differences this you just take and just kind of draw on and then you're going to take a brush and you're going to take some water get your brush wet and it turns into watercolor and i adore the because i love the colors of course then i adore the set um, and it, and it works basically what, like watercolors. If you were to just have water, let me get just some water on this, it's going to behave like regular watercolors. It'll kind of spread out. The nice thing about the fact that we did the embossing is it's a little easier to stay within the lines because you've created a raised spot with the embossing powder. So that works pretty well. 
And this, this leaf right here is two different colors of the pen. But today I think I'm going to go ahead and use watercolors. So I'll set that aside and bring out the watercolor. So when you're doing watercolors, a lot of times they'll show you to uh, get your brush wet and pick up a color. I'm going to use this green over here and then put it here. This is the lid of the paint. The reason why you'd want to do that is because then when you put your brush in it, if you happen to have another color, you're not contaminating that. Um, also, if you want to mix colors, then you're not contaminating. So I'm going to start over here and that's a little dark. It looks, that's gray. That's not green. That's not the color I want. So easy enough. I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe it. And I have two cups of water. One is to rinse my brush and one is to add water because after a while, this is going to be a mud color. It already kind of is. Let's see. Let's find another green. I might end up going with the, because I thought that was green. Let's try this one. This looks like it might be a good green. Now that's a little turquoise. That might work if I mix those two together. Let's give that a try. Still not quite the green I want. Yeah, that's more of the color I'm wanting. I want it to be a little bit more rustic. And I am not by any means a watercolor expert. By no means. Um, if you want a good watercolor video, there's uh, several on YouTube, but I will also link uh, Lexi, who is a designer for Iron Orchid. She did, she's a watercolor and uh, like professional. And she does a lot of the design, or not a lot, she does some designing for Iron Orchid and their uh, stencils, not stencils, okay English and their um, transfers that's what I'm trying to say so she did one of the Christmas ones um, she's just very talented but I'll link that video and you can watch that and the nice thing about the way she shows is it's a little bit more freeform you know you can go two ways you can do you know more of a freeform or you can go okay well nature would have the sunlight coming this way on the pumpkin, therefore. Um, but I like the fact she does show a little bit more free form um, in her video. And I contaminated my good, my good water. Oh well. Like I said, this isn't exactly the color I wanted. But we'll just move forward. And you can introduce other colors. So on this one, because I did use two colors, you get kind of a two-tone leaf. Oops. You can do the inside of the vine a little bit different color. I might do a little bit see what this green looks like. I'm breaking all the rules here. I'm making mud in my paint. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit more green. But you can see how it pools up. You can either leave it like that and it'll dry a little darker or you can brush it out. So next I'm going to just start the pumpkin so that you can see that as we go along here. I got all kinds of nummy colors on this one. So let's get some water. I should change brushes. And I don't have expensive brushes. I'm just using what I have. And I do have a lot of brushes, but these are my cheapest <laughs> brushes that I have right here.
And you can see as you're putting the watercolor down that the embossing is coming through so you can continue to see your lines from your stamp. I almost said stencil again. It's on my mind. So now let's add another color. And that's a pretty pumpkin color right there. This is almost a burnt umber, isn't it? So I think I'm gonna just kind of go over some of this. Hope I'm not on screen. I get going and then I forget to make sure that you can see me. Now another thing you can do is you got paint there that you're not liking exactly how it's coming across. Just water down your brush a little bit and move it around. You can also grab your baby wipe and kind of blot it off or a wet paper towel, blot it off a little bit. That's also the nice thing about using a sealed paint as your base is then you can do that if you used just the DIY without sealing it, it it's not gonna move quite the same. It will move, but not quite the same. So I just brought in a third color up here. And if you get over, that's okay. Just, um, you could use a Q-tip or a wet paper towel and just kind of wipe it up a little bit. You also don't have to paint the entire pumpkin. You can leave some white spots. So just play with it. Enjoy the process. This is, I have to say, so relaxing. So much fun. I love doing watercolor. And you could do stationary this way. You know, some fall stationary on uh, watercolor paper. Do the embossing and then watercolor it. I am going the direction of the pumpkin lines. wanted the top here to be a little bit darker. Get some water in there. If you're a person that likes to sit and watch TV, but has to have their hands doing something. This is, this is great. I don't want too much pooling, I don't think. And once it dries, if you feel like it's not quite what you want, go in there and play with it a little bit. You can wet your brush and you can still move it around. I'm going to grab a brown. Do I have a brown? I have to assume this is a brown. Yeah, for the stem. One thing I did find that um, pigment powder, or not pigment powders, but embossing powders are a little harder to find these days. The A lot of what I have is old, except for the Ranger. Um, I used to do, you know, card making way back. And that was just a staple to what you did. And now it's, a, I went into Michael's and I had a hard time finding just anything but ranger which is fine with me because 
like I said, I, I love their colors. But if you're wanting something, you know, a little bit brighter, a little different, um, then it, you're kind of limited. I'm sure you can order online. And I didn't go to any other stores. I think I want a darker. What do I want? This. And get in there and get some of those vines. I may need a teeny tiny brush to get some of those vines. And like I said, if the coloring isn't exactly what you're thinking, go in after it's dry with a wet, wet paintbrush. Just kind of get in there. I'm going to change brushes here. This part I went across the bottom and you can see the water moving upward and you could just leave that like that you know just let it do its own natural thing just kind of crawled up the the lines of the uh, embossing powder now one thing that you do want to remember when you're um, doing something like this is you need your paint to be transparent because if you just paint it um, the lines won't come through. It might come through a little bit, but it's not going to come through like, um, a watercolor paint does. If you can think of a different paint that might work, that would be great too. I have been playing a little bit more with watercolors for the last, um, six months or so. Not good at it necessarily, but, uh, thoroughly enjoy it. Like I said, it's super relaxing. Where's my brown? I'm gonna do my I've got a little brown in my orange. Just gonna pull it down. And you also want to be able to add colors. You don't want necessarily want just one color. You want to be able to bring in a couple different colors. If you have a very limited set of paint like a, a kid's set, you know, you got white and you got black. So you can lighten, darken. If you've got a gray, that gives you a medium tone of, of darkening. And just kind of play and mix colors. When you're first starting watercolor, they suggest you, um, on a piece of paper, you mix each up, each one of these colors up and do a stripe. So you know which, what they actually look like um, when they're dry. And then you can do mixing. You know, I want to add, I want this pink here to be a little lighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of white and or black or gray, or I want it a little bit more purple. So you can add in a smidge of blue and mix it together and see what you come up with. 
Oh, didn't remember if that was orange on there or not. I think it was brown. And that's about our sign. I'm going to scoot it so you can see it a little bit better. I may go in here and add another leaf or two. We'll see. But that's pretty much it. And it's a oh, and then I'll go and use orange on that. Actually, you can because you know sometimes the leaves get a little burned, so you can put a little brown. Or when they're ripening up, they start turning a little brown. Anyway, have fun with it. And thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions about any of these products, you can go to our website at www.boutiquepaint.com. Thanks. Bye.